Welcome back. Hi. It's good to be back. <laughs> and it's a great honor that former Weinberg Prize winner Professor Nicholas Ponte has chosen our university to continue his research on protein-protein interactions. And in addition to that, Professor Ponte will also lead a select number of excellent students in the Ponte Talent Would class. Like of course. Ladies and gentlemen, Nicholas Ponta. We all know that scientific research boils down to one thing. At the end of the project, we know everything about nothing or next to nothing. But there are some rare moments in one's career when you discover something which will surprise the world. When I looked at the printout of the data on that specific Wednesday morning, yes, back then, all the data was still on paper. <laughs> That's when I knew we've found something. We no longer know everything about nothing, but something very important. A better understanding of how partner proteins diffuse and consequently bind each other in the cell. And if there's anything that Sorry I Sorry for like interrupting, Professor, but did you really discover this yourself? I mean, did you really, personally, make this discovery, this ingenious, world-changing discovery? Sir, if you would be so kind did as to just Did this discovery let... really originate from your own mind? Ooh, smells good. Mm. It's nice. What is it? Sautéed veal brains. <laughs> you said you liked it. For eating his mind. He felt with that. Yeah, well, that's the question. Can a cow think? Yeah, good question. Philosophically speaking, yes. Scientifically speaking, no. Well, philosophy is a science, so if it's a good question philosophically speaking, it's a good question scientifically speaking. No, 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 no. Come on. Philosophy isn't a science. No, not a real science. Philosophers boast that they're scientific practice consists of asking questions, and if they happen to stumble upon an answer, they find it a trivial detail. They ask questions. Wow! Science is about knowing things. And in order to discover these things, you need to ask questions, good questions. And a good question is determined in the way it can be answered. Science revolves around the question, how one can establish something as true. Okay, so... If... Philosophy isn't a science. Hmm. Then what is? Uh, uh, mathematics? Of course. Physics? Does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> and history? Yes, well... No. Look, history is not reproducible. You can't control the variables. Most experiments are uh, about knowing everything about almost nothing. You, you describe history. 
scientific discovery is history. Physicists make history by... So you say that a historical investigation, for example, on the resuscitation experiment, yeah. which was performed in a way that was um, ethically and politically incorrect, a historical investigation, which I happen to have been doing for over the last year, you say that's total bullshit. No, no, I didn't say that. It's not, it's not bullshit. But it ain't science either. Well, most of the university thinks it is. Yeah, but most Weinberg Prize winners in this room think it isn't. Well, it, it, it's how you ask your question, the, the way you structure your Depends question. Depends on whether it's total bullshit or not. Okay, then I shall structure my following question scientifically. Was the guy Descartes right this afternoon? And why did you not answer his question? Because I truly hope it wasn't because he was right. Oh no, you would say. He couldn't be right because it wasn't a properly formulated hypothesis. But isn't asking a question simply stating a hypothesis? Or is that getting too philosophical for you? I'm uh, off to my unscientific research. I'm sorry. And I will also investigate why, for fuck's sake, at the age of 24, I'm still living with my father. Sophie, I'm sorry. The arterial pump takes arterial blood from the reservoir to the head. The isolated head lives on for hours and reacts to external stimuli. Experiment. It's, it's when they keep the head alive, right? <laughs> Yuck. But that is one of the most interesting experiments to explore from an historical viewpoint. Wait a sec. A physicist who thinks history is cool. So either you're lying or you're just a really nice person. Oh, I'm a really nice person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, what about you? What's your topic? I study proteins with a scanning tunneling microscope and I've been selected for the Ponto Talent class. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, congratulations. Thank you. I saw you with him the other day. Are you a thing? Are we a thing? Yes, totally, we're a thing. He's my father. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, oh. it, it isn't that great, really. I think you're better off being in his class. I mean, he's cool, but, um, I mean, just fathers in general. Oh, yeah. But what were you thinking? I'm dating a man in his 50s. Well, age's only a number, right? It's not that big a deal. You should try it. Answer. Yeah? Behind you. 
When will I get an answer to my question? What are you doing here? Do you really think you came up with it all by yourself? Nobody's ever come up with everything all by themselves. We were a team. Exactly. We were a team. We did it together. What do you want? I want what's rightfully mine. Recognition. Yes? Sorry. Really? So how's your uh, research going? Mm, so so. I meant the research into uh, why you're still living with your father. Yeah, mm, that research got stuck. <laughs> so nothing uh, publishable yet. No, I don't think so. Too bad. Oh, don't worry. I still have other projects going. Oh, you're so beautiful. No, you look just, you look just like, um, like mom. Really? <laughs> um, can you help me? If I may. So how did you formulate your research question? How did the Western view on Russian science change over the course of the Stalin era? Yes, it's too big, too vague, it's too difficult to determine. You have to bring it down to Western reactions to make it more concrete. Yeah. So narrow your focus and uh, rephrase your question. For instance, if you single out the dog experiment, then your question could be, how was the dog experiment case covered by American media? This is it, the invention of Kamerling Onnes. This is the machine he built. Do you know who once applied to be Kamerling Onnes' student? Einstein, Albert Einstein himself. The Onnes laboratory was that famous at that time. And how did Onnes and Einstein attract attention to their discoveries? They published their work. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they wrote an article. And that, my dear scientists-to-be, is what is expected of us. 
publish, let your voice be heard. The more publications you have, and the more important the journal in which you're published, the easier it is for you to receive funding, the better the university you work at, and the nicer you car. And then you die. But how amazing would it be if after you're dead, thousands of scientists can build upon your discovery? Because of the publish or perish mentality, we are currently facing an impossible amount of scientific articles. The well-respected The Lancet researched that a while ago, and they found that 85% of the published biomedical research is rubbish, nonsense, poppycock. Hot air, purely published for the sake of it, and which will only be read by one or maybe two others, and contributes nothing to society. Yes, what a discovery! Bees in the south of Peru land on a leaf with a serrated edge more often than a non-serrated one. And if they land there, then there is 18% less chance of rain in the north of Vietnam at the same moment. If you throw in enough data and you give it a good scientific stir, you'd be a complete idiot if you don't find any correlation between something and something else. And then you're published, and your H index goes up, and that, my dear scientists of the future, is a good thing. Not for society, not, not, not for the world, but for you. But that isn't what Honus did. Honus worked for years to prove something that he knew in his heart to be true. And because it was important. And because of that, we now know more about the physics of how our world works. He was searching for knowledge, not an article, and he found it. through passion, honest curiosity, and perseverance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is real science. And honest is the kind of scientist you should want to be. Why don't you just say it? Then I'll leave you alone. What do you think? research into protein-protein interaction. Oh, I'm more famous than I thought. <laughs> that sounds bitter. I'm Rebecca. Pierre. Would you like another one? Sure. Good. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.
That's what I want. Are you coming to my house? Won't you come and put your hands on me? Sure. Good. That's how I like it, baby. Right here. That's what I want. Yes? If I run this STAS-2 analysis, I only get a weak correlation. Barely significant. But if I take the data through the CU-3, I get this result. Oh. And, uh, the CU-3 is what you need, right? Otherwise, you've got nothing. No. Use the CU-3 analysis. But. There are 28 tests to process these data, and for sure they won't all give you useful results. So... So, you choose the CU3 and forget about the rest. If, if you base your conclusions on all the data sets and all the resulting analysis, you will never get anywhere. You know your final outcome is correct. Yes. This is the scientific method. You don't need to show the results you don't need. Otherwise, we'd still be here in 10 years' time. Your age index should be over 20 before the time your hair starts turning gray, and with this rate, you won't even finish your first publication. How do you think you'll graduate, then? You need to pick up the pace and finish your paper. I need your brain for my research on protein diffusion. That's why you're here, OK? Polish your data. Everybody does it. And everybody knows that everybody does it. But don't tell anyone. Shh. Wow. Really good. Can I just say one thing? Yes. You should make a reservation. If you say here, Despite accumulating correlative evidence supporting a neuroprotective role of ERP57, the contribution of this foldase to the physiology of the nervous system remains unknown, then you're fine. But that's the only thing. This is really good. A masterpiece, seriously. <laughs> what? Okay, well, Ponto says I have to ignore the outcome of certain tests. But that means I'm ignoring the majority of my test results. I can't do that. Yes, you can. He's right. That's how we've always done it. Nobody's forcing you to analyze your data using 28 different routines. You simply use the four methods that give the correct result. We used to call it a Ponto polish. Are you serious? Of course. What happened between you two? Well... Was it your idea? Yes. But Listen, he was the group leader. He built that group. He was in charge and I, and I'm not bragging here, I had the insight. And now? What about now? What do you want? That prize should be awarded to both of us. Yeah, but that's a bit late after seven years. You think so? Nowhere near finished, but you did ask for it, so. Oh, thank you. You're welcome.
Nicholas. Hi. I'd like to talk to you about a delicate matter. Yes. It's about ethics. But did you really discover this yourself? In science, of course. Of course. I mean, did you really, personally, make this discovery? Last year, the executive board has indicated that they will be implementing scientific integrity as a university-wide policy, and that any incidences or transgressions should be dealt with immediately. Is this ingenious, world-changing discovery? And perhaps it may have slipped your attention, but as an additional function, I'm the chair of the Integrity Board, and I've been authorized by the Executive Board to make decisions if dubious situations should arise. Yes. Anyhow, I'm asking you this in the strictest confidence. Yes. Did this discovery really originate from your own mind? Anyhow, would you be interested in taking over my task? Uh, it's an additional function. It won't take up a lot of your time, but I just don't have the time at the moment, and I wouldn't know who else to ask. It has to be someone with a spotless reputation, you know? Would you consider it? Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> really? Uh, well, uh, no, I mean, yes, I'll consider it. Oh! Good. Good, thanks. Thank you. Fancy shoes, um, tucked in shirt. I figured that I don't know our business. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> look at him. Oh, he's so laid back. It's a, it's a chemist. For sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's definitely not science. No. Um, I, I, I'll go for art. What's he doing here? Oh, there he is. I'm not going to marry you. You were going to say like this. <laughs> Postdoc. Postdoc. I have to go. Oh. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <clears throat> Blood removed from the animal is pumped back into its vessels by the autoejector. The autoejector ensures a normal blood circulation in the organism, replacing the action of the dead heart and lungs. The artificial blood circulation gradually induces the heart to start beating again. Now, now listen, I, th I think she's a genius. Yeah, I only read the first part, but it's so new, so refreshing. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I'll, I'll mail it to you, okay? No, she's not finished yet, but if you just read the first proposition... Yeah, it's, it's been years. I mean, um, this quality is... Okay, okay, I'll, I'll send it to you, yeah? Okay, bye, bye. I have this student, she's brilliant. Who is it? 
That's a girl from my talent class, Rebecca. She's brilliant. Great. What's the matter? Oh, no, um... I was just thinking about Mom. Darling. Already filled with escartine steak. Unreliable bitch. bitch. Do you know who's unreliable? Your father. He didn't discover anything. His brilliant discovery all came from his tulip, and he's taking all the credit for it. Do you know what my father thinks of you? He's reading your thesis, and he thinks you're brilliant. By the sound of it, you'll have your PhD before you know it. But. Looking at the number of young female professors, generally speaking, there's only two ways for girls like you to become professor before you're 40. Screw your way up the ladder, or be brilliant. My father doesn't want to get into your pants. He's interested in your brains. Would you like me to keep it that way? If you don't go away, I will call the police. Say it, and I'll leave you alone. Say what? What happened? I thought of the project. I made it happen. I got it funded. And I made sure that people like you had years to worry about only one problem, while I had to worry about 500 problems. And because of me, you were paid generously for your work. You were my employee, and if I recall correctly, you were very happy about that. And then, after all those years, you had your idea. So you're absolutely right. It was your idea. Thanks for lending your idea. You're happy now? Congratulations. Now, if you're not out of here in five minutes, I will call the police. Because of me, you were paid generously for your work. <laughs> your man, you were my employee. And that <laughs> After all those years, you had your idea. So complete so you're completely right. It was your idea. Congratulations. So now what? What are you going to do? I'll ruin him. You can't do that. No? No. This will be online tomorrow, you'll see. Pierre. Wait a few weeks. Two months. Why should I? Because it's a chance to let me graduate early. I know he's read my thesis and I know for sure that he will love it. If you take him down now, there's a big chance the next professor won't be so enthusiastic about it. He's the only person who really understands what I'm doing. Despite accumulating corroded evidence, 
say something? Yes. You've got two problems. You need to solve both of them. <laughs> this one was already over. One. You drink too much. Sophie. Quit. Second, that brilliant student of yours, she's sleeping with Escartan. Really? Yeah, I'm certain. Somehow I'm not surprised. And she's telling everyone that you have stolen his ideas. Come in. Sit down. Thank you. I've read it. It's good. Very good. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. In theory, you could, with a few minor alterations, in my opinion, graduate summa cum laude. Really? In theory. I do still have a few questions. Okay. <clears throat> Could you read this to me? Despite accumulating correlative evidence supporting a neuroprotective role of the ERP57, the contribution of this folders to the physiology of the nervous system remains unknown. Rebecca, you realize that if you quote someone, you need to refer to the source. Otherwise, you're committing plagiarism. Yes. <clears throat> Despite accumulating correlative evidence supporting a neuroprotective role of ERP57, the contribution of this foldase to the physiology of the nervous system remains unknown. This sentence was written ten years ago. The probability of you coming up with exactly the same way of describing this material is negligible. Yeah. Um, I'll change it right away. I'll add the reference. I was reading that thesis while I was studying the literature, so... You read it? Or did someone read it to you? You can go now. I heard you were looking for me. Karen, I need to talk to you. <laughs> you don't need to say anything. I understand. You do? I can see it in your face. You're not going to do it. <laughs> Karen, I'm sorry. I, I, I just haven't had the time to consider it yet. Then what's the problem? I have this fantastic student, but she's committed plagiarism. Yes, deliberately. She wants to fix it by adding the references. 
but the intention was definitely there. That sentence you said, you didn't say it was in your thesis. Of course he remembers. inform you that you are suspected of plagiarism. Until a verdict has been reached, you will be suspended from the university and you won't be able to graduate until the matter has been resolved. I should have known. Stupid. Sorry. He's stupid. He knows that wasn't deliberate. He knows I could have just cut that whole sentence. It's the first draft. He could have just totally let it go without a problem. Nobody would have noticed. It's not like it's being published now, is it? Even if this thing gets sorted, I am never going back to his talent class. So... You don't need him anymore? No. Not anymore. Not too much. And not too little. Not too much and not too little. There's a, a study that shows that drinking one glass of red wine a day prolongs life. Though that only seems to be the case when the wine industry is funding the research. <laughs> but I think that when I drink, I really do feel like living longer. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm raising money to support cancer research so that new cures may be developed more quickly. Hold on. My wife is in charge of these things. Emmy! Emmy! Ah, silly. She's already dead. Cancer. Sorry. Do you know that after Nixon declared war on cancer in 1971, we've spent more than a hundred billion on research and cancer death rate has declined with maybe 5%. That's nothing compared to the cardiovascular disease death rate, which has been reduced by 75%. Cancer is business. Millions of people work in cancer research. Every year we spend a hundred million on cancer medication. Do you know what the pharmaceutical industry fears most? That they discover a fantastic and cheap medicine against cancer. It would be an economic disaster. I'll go. I'm sorry. So 
such an ass. Yes. A complete and utter ass. Mum would have been ashamed of you. Yes, that wasn't fair. Oh, yeah. Talking about fairness. Are you right? Pierre and Rebecca? Mm-hmm. Yes and no. Yes, it was his idea. And no, he doesn't deserve the price. I worked on that topic for 15 years. I set up everything. I got the funding. All of it was my doing. Because I felt, no, I, I, I knew there was something there. Something could be there. And then that one suggestion of Descartes speeded things up. But don't forget, the breeding ground for that idea came from me. And that's how science works in the grown-up world. And that's really how it works. God, he's really, he's really stalking me now. Tomorrow, 12 o'clock, online. You were my employee. And then, after all those years, you had your idea. So you're completely right. It was your idea. Congratulations. Look at yourself. Who are you? Who do you want to be? We as scientists think we should establish facts, pass them on to society, to politics. But how can we perform scientific research without considering social consequences? If we know that global warming is happening, should we just produce more data, write even more reports? If those who are best informed about this issue remain silent, then who will speak up? Come on! Should we just shout it from the rooftops? Do you want to describe the world or do you want to change it? Why are scientists no longer activists? In the 50s and 60s, that was completely normal. Einstein, Bohr, they protested against nuclear weapons. Be aware of your role in society. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? It's your choice. It's your responsibility. Who are you? This is the last time I will stand before you. I have been accused of stealing someone else's idea. I did not steal it. And no one in the scientific community will support this claim. But it's rarely the case 
that a scientific discovery is due to the endeavors of just one person. It is due to the endeavors of all of us. So, in accepting the prize addressed to me personally, I did in some way steal that idea. Hi, Karen. Uh, I made a mistake. Rebecca is clean. I'll let her graduate summa cum laude. N no, um, no, I I'll explain it later. i talk to you later. Bye. Don't do it. Thank you. 